Welcome. My name is Richard Schneeman. Going to be talking about arrays. Why are we talking about arrays? Mostly because we are dealing with things coming out of our database. When we are pulling data from our database, it's either going to come out as nil, an object, or as an array. So um, oftentimes you'll want to keep on manipulating it. You'll want to iterate through it. We talked about using each. We might want to map. We might, might want to uh, change it or modify it. Uh, so you might say, all right, well, I already know how to do some of those things. You know, what, what am I going to learn in this uh, section? Well, we are going to learn how to use the docs uh, or documentation. Maybe, maybe I got the attribution wrong on that one. But uh, right now, like right now, you, the person listening to this, open up a new uh, tab in Chrome and go to ruby-doc.org. All right. Now that you're there, you're there, right? Okay. Go to uh, core. It should be at the top. So you want to click on core. It is the core of the language. And once we're on that page, we should see a bunch of classes. You want to click on array. And now we should be on the array page. If you get stuck, just Google Ruby Docs array. Honestly, that's how I do it 99% of the time. Um, it's shorter, quicker. We have a searching culture. So anyway, all right, you should see something like this. Uh, at the top of the page, we're going to have our class name. This is going to be array. It's going to eh, give us a little bit of information about generally what an array is. Uh, on the left-hand side, it's going to tell us what it inherits from. Uh, so a while ago, we talked about inheritance. We had a parent class, and or we had an adult class and a child class, and the child inherited from the adult. Uh, so this is similar. So an array can do anything an object can do. So array inherits from object. Uh, as a matter of fact, everything is an object inside of Ruby. Um, and an object actually stems from basic object, but that's kind of um, overloading you with information. But that, you know, this is where uh, the the parent that is basically saying this inherits from. These are all of the methods. These are everything that the array can do. Now we have, we've been talking about the shorthand, so pound and then something. So pound plus means we can concatenate two arrays together. So you can do array plus array and you, the output will be an array. We also have the methods with the colon colon. Now this is something new. A lot of these are going to be referring to uh, class methods. So um, just a little bit of a different shorthand, but just most of the ones that we're going to be looking at and interested in today are going to be that pound. So those are going to be the instance methods. All right, if you scroll down, eventually you'll see included modules. Now we haven't talked about modules or includes, but um, there is a module called enumerable, and array uh, has access to all of the methods inside of enumerable, which is uh, which is pretty cool if you're wondering. Um, and we will talk about this eventually, just not right now. And finally, we have our website navigation on the side. So uh, what I want you to do today is to use the documentation. And if you follow along with the exercise, then we are going to you know, we have tasked you with a um, set of challenges that is going to um, require some some skill and some investigative uh, browsing of documentation. Uh, so, you know, let's say you are in the wild and you're coding something up and you find a piece of code that looks like this. You don't know exactly what it does. How do we find out? You know, how do we, other than simply opening up IRB and testing it out and playing around, um, you know, maybe we've done that. Maybe we're not, maybe we want something a little bit more substantial. How do we look this up? Okay. Well, we start off on the left-hand side and we say, what is this thing? So one, two, three, four, that's, that's an array. So we, we know that's an array and then we, we move. So we move to the, we read from left to right. Now we go to each. So this is the each method that we're calling on array. So if we go to the array documentation, we can look for array pound each, which means that is the instance method of each on the array class. So if we look that up right now, go ahead. I'll wait. You can search for it. You can do the good old fashioned command F if you're on Mac or control F if you're on Windows. And you should find this method each. Uh, at, at the very top, it's going to say, give us the different ways that we can call it. So each can be called with a block. So here we have uh, curly brackets, uh, bar item, bar, maybe pipe item, pipe, however you want to say it, and then a block, and then another curly bracket. And we're going to, and, and then we have an arrow and 
array. So this is shorthand saying that the output of this is going to be an array. So no matter what we put in, the output is going to be an array. Um, or we can just pass each with nothing, and it'll just return back an enumerator, which is, I guess, kind of interesting. I've never done that. Never found a need for it. And then we have a basic description, just a really simple description. So it says it calls block once for each element in self, passing that element as a parameter. If no block is given, an enumerator is returned instead. So there you go. Uh, and then my favorite part, it actually gives us an example. So if you didn't have that code, if you didn't know what each did at all, this is going to give you something self-contained that you can just post paste directly into IRB. So just try right now. You can, you can highlight it, go over, uh, paste it into IRB. Oh, wait. Maybe not. Okay, um, so with when you're inside of IRB, now we can play with the example. So we open up IRB, uh, paste it in, and then we iterate over it. So there, there we go. We got. Uh, we do want to make and make sure and double check that we get the same result that was listed in our documentation. And this is very important. Um, otherwise, maybe uh, they have a different library installed or something along those lines. Uh, so, you know, once you have that inside of IRB, you can modify it, you can, you can see some, tweak it around a little bit, you can, uh, you can play with it, which is, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to use a, a method is through the examples, um, you know, sure the description helps and sure that the documentation helps, but, uh, being able to actually get your hands on it is what programming is all about. Now, I will warn you that some documentation is better than others, some methods are better documented than others. And some methods aren't even documented really at all, but the documentation is a great place to start. Uh, it's a great place to look for, well, look, look for well, documents. So uh, just a quick overview of some of my favorite array methods that you'll be using in the exercise we're going to be, or maybe using. Um, it's up to you. As long as you can complete the exercise, you don't have to use these methods, but it, maybe it'll make your life a little bit easier. You'll be using each map, map, bang, reject, select, detect. Um, the next one is an ampersand, which is actually going to be an intersection. We have plus, which is a concatenation. We have less than, less than, which is actually an uh, insertion. We've got flatten, unique, compact, first, last, count, each with object. Don't worry, you don't have to remember all of those. That's what we have documentation for. It's like your cheat sheet and Every single test you take is open book exam um, whenever you're programming because you've always got your cheat sheet with you. So some of these methods are alias, just a heads up. So for instance, map is alias to collect. Um, so if you call map, it is the exact same thing as calling collect, just with a different name. Uh, so if you find documentation and it says, hey, it, you know, it's like looking up something in a dictionary. It's uh, you know, it's, it, it might say, you might look up a kid and it says, uh, or see children, you know, that's kind of a similar thing. You just follow the documentation and then eventually you'll find out what it does. Uh, some methods also take optional arguments. We've used first before. Here we have an array and we can call first on it. It'll give us the first element. Now, if we pass in an argument to that array, say first three, well, we'll actually get an array back with the first three elements in that array. You know, so there are different ways we can call these methods sometimes. Some methods take optional blocks. So we can count the we can count things in our array if we count all of these. We got five elements, and let's say maybe we only want to count things that are equal to f. So if we pass in a block of um, each element, we're checking to see if it equals f, then hey, we return back to. Um, that's an example of one way that we can see if. Um, something is inside of a, or how many times a certain type of an element is inside of an array. The important thing to remember is these are different ways of calling the same method, and those should be all outlined in the documentation. Finally, uh, some methods might look alike, but have a bang operator. So exclamation mark kind of take is a lot of syllables. So in computer programming, we call the exclamation mark the bang. Um, so whenever you hear me say bang, I'm not trying to emulate a, you know, gunshot or anything along those lines, I'm saying I'm exclamation mark. So here we go. We, if we have a, an array of A, B, C, B, A, B, C, B, seems, seems reasonable. And then we map that array to foo colon plus 
those elements. So it's going to be foo colon A, foo colon B, foo colon C, foo colon B. Uh, and we assign that to a variable of B. If we put B.inspect, we get what we would expect. We get the, that array back. So we built an array using map. So, um, but if we inspect A, then you will see that A hasn't changed at all. But what if we wanted to change it? We could use array map with a bang. And then it will actually modify our array whenever we run this command. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and move on to the exercise. It is going to be a little bit different from what we are used to. We are going to be looking at tests. So we, I've written a bunch of, um, or you know, just a, just a couple of tests, and it is going to be your job to get them to pass. Um, it's okay that we haven't talked about tests. I, I walk you through it a, a good amount. And um, we are going to do a couple together, just if you go along with the documentation, first of all. The first half of it is going to be focused on arrays and the array documentation, and then we're going to jump over and take a look at the active record documentation in Rails. All right. Thank you very much for sticking around today, and good luck on the exercise.